One of the coolest features that I like in Microsoft's new version of Excel is Power Maps. And if you haven't experienced Power Maps, it will change the way that you plot and see and visualize information. So many of us are used to the tables and the tabular format that all spreadsheets are in. The powerful uh, use case here for Power Maps is being able to show the data actually popping out of the map. So I want to show you how to do this and then a few tricks and tips as you navigate that. So if I go to my Insert tab, I have this 3D map uh, under the Tours here, and I can open that. If you don't have that in your version of Excel, you can go to File, Options, and go to Add-ins. And you may have to go to either the Excel Add-ins or Com Add-ins. And you can see here I have Power Map for Excel as an active application. For you, if it's not showing up, it may be under inactive applications. That's when you need to activate it. And so just go through that wizard to activate Power Maps. So you should see it once you have that under your insert toolbar under 3D Map. Well, let's go ahead and click open there. The way Power Maps works is it communicates back and forth with Bing as Microsoft has an, has an agreement with Bing to, for the mapping piece of this. And what it's going to do is it's going to map the data that I have uh, in my spreadsheet on the map. So what we're going to do is control how that's mapped, and we're going to control what we want to see as the end product. And there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can create videos, screenshots for PowerPoints, uh, and you can, uh, or you can do a flyover tour, upload it to YouTube, and send along your findings that way. First thing to note, though, is your data does need to be in a table format. So a good way to do this is select everything, format as table, just select it. That way you know here's the range of your data. And that way Power Maps can access it accordingly. So it went ahead and pulled in my data. I can refresh this at any point if the data in my spreadsheet changes just by selecting refresh data. And it goes ahead and starts plotting, and it does this uh, by looking at the geographical um, columns that you have within your spreadsheet. Here I have city, state, uh, zip codes, and I have that for both destination and origin. Let's say the map I really want to show is the weight going to destinations that are Walmart locations across the U.S. So instead of city, I'm going to select uh, zip code. And so I do that. You can see at the bottom it's processing all these different values. Again, there's many more zip code, uh, zip code combinations or values than state and city. So it does that. And so you can see it's plotted all of that. I'm going to make a few changes here as we start to dive into this. As you can see, the world is round. In this case, I'm going to make it sometimes it's easier to view. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of a tilt here. Let's add map label. Now we can see what we're working with. We can also do different themes. So themes can change it, can change your color scheme to really bring out certain aspects of the map. I like this one where it's kind of a whitewashed map with, uh, with blue dots. Um, so now we need to give it some height. In this case, I wanted to show weight. So I'm going to click to the height, and let's add weight. So by default, it does does a sum of the weight. We can do several other metrics. We can do a count. Uh, we can do an average. But we really just want the sum here. This is a little legend that pops up. You have the ability to minimize this, to keep it, to uh, even delete. Let's just remove it to this point. So now we can see the bars popping out of the map. This is for every uh, destination that was in our spreadsheet file. And like I said, I wanted to add that. Um, maybe that category where I could see Walmart shipments versus non-Walmart shipments. So I have this column called WM, question mark. Let's go ahead and add that. And let's bring back our legend. So in this layer, if you remember back to previous sessions, one, where the orange color means that is a Walmart shipment. Blue means that it's something other than Walmart. So we can see now where our Walmart shipments are. There's another approach here. If you don't want to see those other shipments, we can just filter it out. So let's go here to filter, and I'm going to scroll down. Let's filter this out. So I just want to see one, which corresponds to Walmart location. And now I can actually hover over the bars and see the 
uh, the actual weight summation for those shipments that were associated with Walmart and destination. Very cool. There's a couple of other things you can do here. You can change the way this graph shows your data. So in this case, we have bars coming out of the out of the chart. I could change this to a heat map very easily. You can see where the the heat is uh, from a delivery density standpoint. I'm going to change it back to stack column because I like that. As you can see, it it changed back our view. So I may have to go back in here and let's add a category. Well, we don't need a category because we've already filtered for Walmart. So that's that works. A color is blue. And so we've got options for how we can display that. We can add additional layers if we wanted to. We could just minimize that and add another one. We can do on the graph charts. So let's select 2D chart. And this just kind of guesses what we may want to see, which gives us uh, top zip codes here on the x-axis and the weight. Uh, down below, so that's maybe a cool way to display certain pertinent pieces of information. In this case, it's just info overload. Uh, we can certainly look at the map very easily and see what zip codes are the are the largest. But this may be helpful in your application. A few other uh, pieces of info to note. So there's a time. There can be a time element associated with this as well. So you see a time category, and we have a something that is formatted as a date. Let's go ahead and click that. And what that does, you'll see this pop up in the top left-hand corner. Again, something you can move anywhere on the chart. But when we press the play button down here, it's going to show the deliveries happening over time based on their corresponding date and time. Pretty cool little feature. The last option I want to show you is the ability to create a video. So how we do this, uh, on the lower, on the left-hand side, you see you have this tour editor. What tour editor is is it can help you develop different scenes that you want to scroll through um, as you based on whatever you're presenting. So we can easily copy this scene, and maybe we just want a still shot of the state of Florida for scene number one. So let's do that, and then I'm going to change the settings here where it's just going to be a two-second scene. We can name it, intro. And then now we're going to go to scene number two, which comes out. We can pick the transition effect again. So maybe we want the effect to be a, uh, a flyover. I'm going to shorten our transition a little bit. And now we can play the video and see what we have. And so you can string together these different scenes over time to create a video that you can then save on your computer and if you wish to upload or just send, uh, send to whomever you want to show. So a pretty neat piece of technology that's within Microsoft Excel. Not a lot of people know about it. It's hidden in there, but it uh, allows you to do some cool things. Again, Power Maps for Excel for version 2013. Um, and greater, it uh, also works with uh, Office 365.